Ninja Nigel here with a rather technical introduction to our endurance boards here at Ape Index in Leicester. I'm sure many of you have seen endurance walls before but ours are kind of small single boards and I'd like to explain why. First let's take a look. We have four boards at 12, 20, 30 and 45 degree angles. The 45 is set with a 16 hold circle. The 30 degree board has a 40 hold spiral. The 20 degree board is a typical session board and the 12 degree board has a spiral and a circle. On the 45 degree board you get on one of the rest holes, do one or more circuits and return to the rest hold. Take a breather and go again. On the 30 degree board you can rest at either end of the 40 moves. They might not look like proper moves as they're small from one hole to the next but what we're trying to do is isolate the training of energy systems away from the big explosive moves that we have in other parts of the gym. Now it's only a theory of mine and many people will disagree as to the relevance of smaller moves so I'd like to try and explain how I think this type of training will be beneficial. First off, what do I mean by energy systems? Our muscles have a few different energy systems and each one has its place keeping us connected to the rock. The first is muscle ATP. ATP is the molecule that gives energy to all cells and muscle ATP is the small amount stored in our muscles ready for use. It's what gives us immediate strength and power. Unfortunately it only lasts a few seconds. Then in comes your CP system. CP stands for creatine phosphate or phosphocreatine. It sits in your muscles and is able to synthesize ATP for immediate use. It lasts about 10 seconds. Then you fall back on your lactic acid system which without using oxygen generates ATP. This process is called anaerobic glycolysis. Your lactic acid system can last a couple of minutes. After that it's aerobic glycolysis, the conversion of glycogen from carbohydrates using oxygen or fatty acids using oxygen to generate ATP. Both of these systems can last a few hours. There are also ketones for muscle and brain cells but we're focusing here on typical muscular endurance. Ketones only become important in a low carb diet and this discussion is complex enough as it is. All the time during climbing and any other exercise, all of our energy sources are being used and replenished according to the body's needs. For example, the closer you are to your limit of strength, the more likely you are to use CP. When you do powerful moves, which is those requiring high energy for a short time, such as launching, reaching and latching holds, then you are in ATP territory. If the replenishment rate is slower than the depletion rate, you eventually run out of energy and fall off. Here's a graph showing muscle ATP and phosphocreatine replenishment rates along with the lactic acid buildup and reduction. Each of these graphs is different for every individual and endurance training helps us improve recovery time and reduce the effect of lactic acid buildup. If you're bouldering and have depleted your muscle ATP and creatine, then a minute's rest may get you back on your feet. Wait three minutes and you're back to 100%. If you're root climbing and need to clear out the effects of a sustained effort, or if you're dieting or ill or in any energy depleted state, then you'll need longer to recover. I'm also using the term lactic acid buildup because it's the most recognizable. The lactic acid energy system is a complex sequence of chemical events, and lactic acid is one of the last products, but it is still a source of energy. It may not be lactic acid, or as it is also called blood lactate, or just lactate, that is the problem. It may be an excess of neutrons or also the change in pH causing the feeling of forearm pump. You will also see a dotted line showing active rest being better than passive rest for recovering from pump and that's why we shake out. Moving breaks down and clears all of the things preventing you from getting going again faster than sitting still does. Forearm massage, jumping up and down, waving your arms and shaking out are all active rather than passive rest. These energy sources are not used in isolation. They are all humming at the same time depending on your depletion levels and exertion levels. For example, here's a graph showing a 70 kilogram person jogging at 6 miles per hour. If you're climbing and breathing at a rate you would when jogging, you're burning all muscular energy sources at once, including muscle glycogen which is constantly being replenished, muscle triglycerides, blood plasma free fatty acids and blood plasma glucose. The question to try and get back to the beginning is how this all relates to climbing endurance training. So you're relaxed. You've had a rest, you pull on. 
In a couple of seconds your muscle ATP is fading and your CP system starts up to replenish your ATP. At the same time the lactic acid system kicks in to do the same and the CP is broken down to make ATP is also replenished. You start to breathe harder. Your aerobic system is contributing to your energy needs and replenishing the other energy sources. You keep moving. Holding your body up is not a maximal effort. The energy comes from your lactic acid and aerobic systems while the CP and muscle ATP systems are replenished. Lift your body weight a bit, ready to move. Flick for the next hold. Latch it. Three high power requirements in a row. Your muscle ATP takes a hit and the CP is used up a bit more to replenish it. Another move. More strength to hold you up. More power used on each transition. Eventually your muscle ATP is gone, your CP is used up, you're relying on a trickle of ATP from your lactic acid and aerobic systems. Finally the replenishment's less than the requirement and you're off. So you're not training muscles to grow or do anything different. You may be repurposing your type 2A muscle fibres but this is a long process taking months or years. You're training your energy systems to replenish themselves better and your neuromuscular system to cope with the chore of staying on when you'd rather dive off and sit chatting to your buddies while sitting on a nice soft mat with the sun going down over the hills and the breeze rippling. <coughs> um, energy systems, endurance walls. To train energy systems you don't need to do 4x4s four or long routes but you do need to mimic the energy requirements. It's a mix of strength, holding yourself in place while setting up for a move or resting, and power, which is all the individual time-dependent elements that make up the move. I'd like to finish with a note on the difference between strength and power. Although we use these words interchangeably, they have slightly different energy requirements. Strength is the ability to exert a force. A strong person will be able to get into a position and hold it, but may not be able to pop for the next hold. Power is the ability to generate energy in a limited amount of time. A powerful person may not be able to hold a position, but can heave for the hold by generating more power from a less strong position. Here's a power move. All the strength in the world won't help you make the move. But if you can generate sufficient power, you can get up. So a powerful move is anything with a time-limited aspect to it. And powerful moves use up your muscle ATP. Here's a strength move. If you haven't got the strength, you won't be able to hold the position. And all the power in the world won't help you get anywhere. Endurance training for climbing is a mix of strength and power endurance. The strength requirement is to hold you onto the wall and get you in position. And the power requirement is the individual time-dependent pieces of the transition from one hole to the next.